How many reps do you need in your training? Now the answer to this is, it depends. It depends on your goal and what you're hoping to achieve. Now, there's a lot of science around which rep ranges are best. And some people actually respond to low reps very well. Some people respond to high reps very, very well. It's said that from 12 plus is endurance. It's said from, you know, maybe eight to 12 is hypertrophy. Three to six to eight is strength. And then maybe one to three could be classed as power. Now, whilst there's definitely some truth to this, the fact is you can get results from all different kinds of rep ranges. Now, obviously, if you're a professional bodybuilder, you're probably not gonna be training on two, three reps because the idea is to get maximum volume in the muscle for mass to have the fuller ripped look. And usually you require more reps that way. Yet again, if you wanna get really strong, you can get strong a few ways. You can get maximally strong by doing strong men training, which is, you know, one, two, th maybe three reps max where you're just shifting weight from point A to point B as a weightlifter. Or you could be somebody who just wants to get really lean and you're doing things like calisthenics where you're doing pull-ups and, you know, dips and things and you have to do 15, 20, maybe more reps. And everyone produces results. That's the thing. I believe in a variation because if I was to use myself as an example, I spent many years doing the bodybuilding approach where I would train 8, 10, 12 reps and think that was the magic range to build muscle. And I did build muscle from those rep ranges and adequate protein and stimulus, etc. However, most recently, over the last sort of three years, I've dedicated myself to Olympic weightlifting, which is your snatch, your clean and jerk, your back squat, overhead press, things like that, which is very much reliant on strength and power. So the majority of my reps have been twos and threes, occasionally fours and fives, but fours and fives would actually be classed as high reps. But as a result, I've actually built quite a lot of muscle and stayed in some of the best shape of my life. One thing that most people don't realize is that yes, while the rep range could be important, I think what's more important and more overlooked is the intensity of the training. If you go back to my previous video, which you'll see on the screen now about the one to 10 scale and how hard your workouts should be, this is kind of an extension of that. For example, when I'm doing a snatch and I am snatching the weight from the floor, I am doing sometimes maximum three reps. Sometimes it's even singles. But what I'm doing is I'm using a percentage of my maximum weight. Now this is a weight lifting approach and I know what the maximum weight I have ever shifted with decent form is and I work on a percentage of that. So I know with a certain exercise like the snatch I know what my 100% is. So I know that's the maximum weight that I can lift with decent enough form where I'm not going to hurt myself. Now with that, that is my 100% effort level. Now I couldn't train like that all the time and get results because I'd just get hurt and I wouldn't be able to lift it um, and it wouldn't work long term. But if I was to drop that back to 70% of that or 80% of that, there's something I could work with, which would challenge me. So when my programs are put together and when you're training in the gym, you should remember, right, if, if I finished a set of two snatches, I want to think to myself, right, if I absolutely had to, if I had a gun to my head, could I do another two reps of that? Quite possibly. Just two though, at the most. Then I know I'm in a good effort level range. So I'm training hard. So even if you're training for hypertrophy and you're training, you know, eight to 10 reps, it's a great rep range. But if you're finishing those 10 reps and you could continue another seven reps on top of that, you might be better off dropping the reps to five or six if that's like near your maximum. And you'd probably get better results because of the intensity, the motor recruitment, the amount of muscle fibers that have to work and break down to be able to shift that weight because it's not necessarily all about the rep range but how well you're training and of course technique comes in massively you should never be training heavy just for the sake of it like ego lifting you know you should never be benching with bad form just because it'll hurt your shoulders in fact i've stopped heavy barbell bench recently because my shoulder's just hurting too much. I can, I can bench over 100 kilo naturally, but it hurts my shoulder too much. So I swapped the dumbbells because there's more range of motion and I, I can, I'm not lifting as much, but I'm lifting better with that. And I can lift with more intensity and not hurt myself. So you have to consider this when you're looking into something. And I, I always urge people, I know you can get plans online. You can look and I, I, I read the flex magazines and the muscle and fitness magazines before the internet was huge. And I did those plans and I got some relatively good results out of it. But there's nothing quite like having a coach or a mentor to guide you through your particular result. And I got so much further ahead doing that when, once I dropped the ego and thought it has to be 
be this way or it must be that way for results because that's what Arnie did or that's what such and such in the gym did and he looked like that. But then I thought, you know, if I want to take a, an approach where I want to lift safely and I want to move safely and I want to just get healthier and stronger and I want to even get fitter, obviously I'm relating this to a weightlifting experience, you know, but I also on top of that train body weight. So I do push-ups and pull-ups and planks and squats and burpees and I love those kinds of things and that adds more volume which also gets my cardio going if you will more which makes me feel great and energized which complements my weight training as well. I don't think that you should just do one or the other. I think you should accompany both. I think they both work in synchronicity very, very well. But again, it's the same with your cardio. If you're just doing and, you know very easy state stuff where you can hold conversations fully you really need to be pushing yourself more you need to be getting out of breath you need to be getting to the point where you need a little bit of a rest and you know you're challenged and you're taking layers of clothing off and there's sweat coming off you like we must be willing to train hard hopefully this video has been very useful for you click the share button tag your friend in it and I'll see you on the next one. If you'd like to learn how to create outstanding levels of energy motivation and self-control my second book, Supercharged, The Modern Day Guide to Doing Exactly That, is out now.